I'm Alex Beard. Thank you all for coming. That's my wife, Kate, over there. Say hi, Kate. Hi. Uh, we have a costume business together, Bad Wolf Costumes, and we sell lots of sewing patterns and, and costumes and all sorts of very cool stuff. We're on Facebook and Etsy and everything. But you're not here for like any kind of a sales pitch this morning. We're just talking about the 10th Doctor's costume. I just wanted you to be aware. And she's actually the one who got me into Doctor Who. I had never, um, I think I may have heard of Doctor Who before I met her. Um, but I was a big Star Trek fan. Um, love Star Trek, lifelong Star Trek fan. And she was a big fan of Doctor Who. We, uh, when we got married, I wanted to share Star Trek with her, and she wanted to share Doctor Who with me. So we did kind of a cool uh, trade. Kind of, kind of. A, we wanted to share our nerd love. So we would watch uh, an episode of Star Trek one night, an episode of Doctor Who the next night. Star Trek, Doctor Who, and we started with New Who. Neither of us had seen Classic Who at that point. So my first Doctor was Christopher Eccleston, the Ninth Doctor. I, I. Um, I wasn't sure at first about Doctor Who, coming from like a Star Trek and Stargate background. Doctor Who's kind of weird, you know, and I, I was watching in those first few episodes, I was like, I don't know about this. Hello. Good morning. Sorry I'm so late. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. We, we, just, we just started. Um, you got your card. Oh, yep. Yep. Everything's, everything's good to go. This is Kim, everyone head of the costuming track. Thank you all for coming. Yes. And, uh, Please don't forget to rate us on the app. And I'm just going to sit here and... There's, there's an app? <laughs> there's an app. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I will rate this panel a 10 out of 10. <laughs> or a 5 oh. out of 5, whatever, whatever it is. No, I think a 10 out of 10. Don't you guys agree? Yeah. It, well, I mean, is it, is it a 10 or a 5? Like, what's the scale? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. I'm too dumb well, to have a smartphone. <laughs> well, we should definitely give it the highest rating, you and me. Yes, indeed, of course. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so anyway, I, I was really feeling Christopher Eccleston, and um, she was really looking forward to David Tennant. I didn't know anything about him other than um, she seemed to kind of be crushing on him a little bit, and, <laughs> and um, I felt mildly threatened in our relationship oh, by, no. by, this, by this other man in her life that I'd never even met. So... Uh, when, when we got, I, I hated that Christopher Eccleston left so early, um, but when David Tennant showed up the first time, my, my first thought was like, okay, who's this twerp in the doctor's clothes, and uh, talking about his teeth being weird, okay, I want Christopher Eccleston back, and, um, and I was like, I should give him a chance, because Kate and I like many of the same things, and dislike most of the same things, and there, there are things one of us might like more than the other, and one of us might dislike more than the other, but for the most part, we're on the same page. And I said, okay, I'll give this David Tennant guy a chance. And then he slept through like three-fourths of his first <laughs> special. Oh and I was like, okay, whatever. But, you know, at the end of the Christmas invasion, we see him in costume for the first time. And I thought it was a very cool costume. And, and of course, like they so often do, he, he really won me over. And he ended up being a very, very wonderful doctor. And I loved his costume. I saw it, and, and you have to understand, I, I've always hated suits. We were talking about this earlier. I've always hated wearing suits, hated wearing shirts and ties, never really paid attention to coats or, or anything. I was, I was a shorts and T-shirt kind of guy, and, and it, this made me want to wear a suit. I wanted that suit. I wanted to wear that suit, and I wanted to, to make that suit because I enjoy making things. I um, I'd done a lot of Star Trek costuming at that point, but nothing... Nothing like this. Uh, it's a very, very different kind of project um, with the Star Trek costumes. You can see here, I, I brought one. Excuse me. This is from Enterprise, the last Star Trek show. You can see it's like a denim jumpsuit with lots of top stitching, lots of zippers, patches, elastic in the back, waistband buttons. Nothing like a, like a suit. You know, tailoring, bespoke tailoring. Um, let me set this, set this back down. Nothing fitted. Most of the fitting comes from gathering and elastic and all that. And then the, the kind of stretchy turtleneck style undershirts. Oh, I'm like, this is cotton lycra, so you can see here it, it stretches. You don't have to worry about things like darts and fitting lines. 
buttons and all that all that fun stuff canvas lapels collar whatever so I knew I wanted to make this suit and I didn't really know where to start I'd done a lot of costuming but I hadn't really um, not not at this level not on this kind of project so I did I started doing some casual research um, just Google tip doctor suit or, or tenant suit or, or how to make a tenant doctor suit or whatever and of course one of the first things to come up is Steve Rick's blog, tenantsuit.blogspot.com. You've, you've heard of it? Anyone else heard of it? Oh, yeah. He's done a lot of wonderful research and um, progress photos and everything on his blog. I definitely recommend you check it out. He has photos of the costumes from the, uh, the costume exhibition. and he, One of my favorite things of his is a tie index, all the different ties that the 10th Doctor wore in the episodes. And he's like, he wore this tie in these episodes, he wore this tie in these episodes and this one. And he has like original ties and replica ties and photographs them together. It's very cool, very, um, very cool stuff. He made his own tenant suit as well. And if, and, and if you read through his blog kind of chronologically, he didn't know where he was starting either. He was like, um, start, start, I'm not sure exactly where he started, but he didn't really know much about this. And I, and I saw, well, he learned how to do all this, so I can too. I'm at least ahead of where he started, so I should at least be able to kind of get in at that, at that level. Um, so that was encouraging. It was very inspiring. And I didn't... I still didn't really know where to start, though. I saw a lot of his progress photos, and I saw a lot of um, photos. I, I was just casually researching at this point. And I'd done a lot of Star Trek costuming, and I was on some Starfleet costume panels and everything. And there was a guy on there named Michael Cowart. Um, I was hanging out with him. We were talking Star Trek costumes. I told him I was getting into Doctor Who, and he said, you should learn about tailoring. You know, you've done all the Star Trek costume stuff, but you should really learn about tailoring. You should learn about suit making and Victorian tailoring and all this other stuff. And he recommended this book to me, Tailoring, Classic Guide to Sewing the Perfect Jacket. It is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful entry book. If you don't know very much about tailoring, it really breaks down the basics, like what's done and why. It has so many beautiful color photos. I'll get more into this later, and I'll pass it around so you can take a look at it. Um, but he recommended that to me. He is a very brilliant man. He has a panel at 3 o'clock today on the 8th Doctor's costumes. He's like an 8th Doctor guru, all things 8th Doctor. So definitely check out his panel if you can. But um, So that's enough about me and Kate and Michael and Kim and everyone else. The actual suit. Um, curiously, how many people here like the brown suit better and how many people like the blue suit better? Brown suit? Blue suit? Oh, wow. Lots of blue suit fans. Wow. You know, I always liked the brown one better myself until like a month and a half ago. I always hated the blue suit for some reason. And then like a month and a half ago, something just reversed in my brain. And I was like, oh, wow, I, that's lovely. I want a blue suit, too. And I, um, I have the blue fabric here. And she's actually wearing a Magnolia blue suit. Uh, maybe I'll showcase you later when we get to the blue suit. But um, both suits are very similar in structure and style, but they're, but they're a little different, and so we'll, we'll get into that. But first, if you look at the Tenth Doctor's suit, it's very unique. It's not at all like a typical off-the-rack kind of suit. I don't know how, you, how well you can see that. I made it as big as I can. But some of the unique things about this suit, probably most um, obviously, is the fabric, both the blue and the brown. It's a very lightweight cotton fabric. It's not like wool or cashmere camel hair or like a wool cashmere blend, nothing like that. It's a very lightweight cotton, which is just a very unusual choice for a suit. And if you look as I move, like it, it wrinkles. And his suit was always very wrinkly. Like if you look at the, the way it drapes, it's very lightweight and kind of crumply. And that was an intentional decision that Tennant and Louise Page, the costume designer, kind of talked about. He wanted to be kind of a crumply wrinkly kind of doctor it's a very it's like a shirting like if you feel like a dress shirt that's what this is made out of Were they made from pants originally? exactly yeah i was going to get to that well I'll, how about now <laughs> now um for those of you that don't know there there was no suit that they bought they finally they, they went shopping and at the gap they found these trousers that were made out of this fabric the gap trousers and there wasn't a suit jacket, so what happened was they bought like every pair of Gap trousers that they could find, and they cut them apart 
and then they cut the suit from the leftover like pant legs <laughs> that were there. And that's why part part of why it, it, you know fortunately for them, tenant is quite thin, so you didn't have to worry about you know trying to to there would have just been extra panels, I guess. But you look at the um, the side of the suit right here. It's a separate panel. It's a third piece. There's not a dart under the arm like so many suits have that just kind of stops right here. It goes all the way to the bottom. It's a separate panel. And part of that is because there are um, only maybe this much in terms of pant legs that you have to work with. So you can get a front out of a pant leg. You can get like a side and a back maybe. So you can get maybe, I, I'm guessing, about half a suit out of a pair of pants. Maybe a little bit more like with some of the pockets and pocket flaps and sleeves. But the, the suit was basically made from pants. <laughs> uh, take the pants, make a jacket, which was just very unusual. But, um, you know, kudos to them for that out-of-the-box thinking. I would never, that would never have occurred to me. I'm, I'm very literal, like, okay, here's a bolt of fabric. I'm going to buy it and make whatever I want. Um, so that's part of why his suit is constructed the way it is. And, and this fabric, like I said, it wears like a dress shirt over your shirt. So it, it's like a shirt that's cut like a suit. And very, very unique. Um, another thing that's unique about it is you see it has four buttons. Most suits that you see have, you know, one or two or, or maybe three buttons. It's, it's very unusual that you see four. You do sometimes, but it's not, it's not a popular wearing style. Um, now, I'll touch on this later, too. Ten never wore all four of them buttoned like this, like you think he would. Um, he actually wore it all kinds of different ways, but you have the option of whatever combination of four buttons you want to use if you're cosplaying as the Tenth Doctor. So you have that four button closure. It has very, a very high collar and a very wide collar notch, more than you would normally see. If you see on his and on mine, like you often see these deep collars that kind of come down to here. And there are different kinds of collars, um, or, or collar notches rather. Some, sometimes you have like peak, peak collars, um, see there's a lot on coats and and you have ones that kind of have a closer angle but his was very his was, was very wide um, as you can see here at the curved lower front that's not that abnormal um, the suit jacket obviously matched the pants because it was made out of the same fabric there were no vents on his sleeves either it's all one piece but there were some decorative buttons which was just a nice little touch. It would have been a lot more boring if there was if there weren't these buttons on the sleeves. It just kind of adds a nice little nice little touch. And the blue suit was pretty much the same way. Oh, the back, right? So you have a tapered back like you often do on tailored garments. And there's this waistband in the back. You can kind of see on mine. There's a waistband here. You don't see those often on on suits anymore. Um, Doesn't that come from the, the Norfolk Chinese Made Possibly. I'm, I'm not very familiar with that garment right now, but it, it well could. I imagine it was probably just to either stabilize it structurally or possibly these pieces might have been cut as separate pieces as this and that just needed to hide the seam line. <laughs> possibly. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. You see, like he, he wore several different brown suits, and, and here's the, the mind blowing part, and I'll get into this in a minute. You think brown suit, blue suit, but there were actually several different brown suits and there were a bunch of different blue suits in terms of cut they're all slightly different they're they're um slightly different in their cut oh and there was the vent at the bottom in the back so you look at the blue suit basically the same structure you have the four buttons kind of the same structure with the collar and the lapels you have the rounded front you have the dart four buttons basically the same these were not made out of gap trousers, uh, but they found a, a very similar fabric, very similar weight, like a shirting fabric, and just kind of made another suit um, similar, and, and I'll get into why later and, and why the blue suit came into play, but just for now know that the blue suit's very similar to the brown suit. Are you, are you getting the door, Kim? If you want me to. I would love for you to. Thank you. So... As you can see here, kind of the same structure on the blue suit as the brown suit. Now, obviously, he was in costume at the end of the Christmas Invasion when we saw. And then in season two, when he first showed up, 
Um, it's series two. I say season. Just know when I say season two, I'm not talking about William Hartnell's second year. I'm talking about the, the relaunch in 2005. Um, so much work goes into this, and, and it's just kind of funny that uh, I, it took me about 10 days to make this, about 100, 120 hours at least, and having to make several of these for David Tennant and several for the stunt people and stand-ins and, and backups for production rotation is, a, is just a staggering amount of work. And in his first episode, what do they do but dunk him <laughs> in this goo for decontamination and I that oh just the thought of that makes my stomach turn and I just nauseous at how that must have made every, I mean I doubt David Tennant cared because he didn't have to make it but um, that, that's an easy thing to write on paper as a writer but as a as a costumer you know you protect this with your life you, you carry around like a limp roller you don't eat with it on because you don't want to spill ketchup on your 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 thing your sixty dollar yard fabric or or whatever i'm going to take this off so i don't bang it into the chair again if it's made of a shirt can't you just launder it what was that if it's made of a shirt can't you just launder it you would never launder a tailored jacket you can get it dry cleaned dry cleaned um you could possibly launder the the pants um i would not run them through the dryer but you could maybe machine wash them on gentle i haven't tried i'm a little afraid to to be honest so Exactly. I, I would definitely go the dry cleaning route if I was going to clean a, a tailored suit. Um, so yeah, the gunk it, and, and you'll be able to see, we'll get into this more, but um, his suits really got worn down over that first year. So um, the first two brown suits, he had two different brown suits in season two. You can see here the collar, I'm a, I'm a big fan of his early brown suits, not so much the later one. The collar is cut right on a pinstripe so that that seam line is right there. It's a very nice touch. You see how like I kind of outlined it on the, on the left. So the collar's there, and... Oh, where'd it go? The lapels were kind of the same way. This is actually called the lapel facing. Um, this is the lapel. The facing is the part that you actually see. You can see the edge of that is on a pinstripe as well. So it's very nice in terms of kind of the strategy of the suit. You see mine's the same way. I have the pinstripes here and here. The only difference between his two suits was the back. And can, can you see this okay? Yeah. Everyone see okay? The shape of the back, you look at the pinstripes, they form kind of a V mm -hmm. like that. One suit, and that's because the back was kind of cut on a diagonal like this. But the other brown suit was cut at more of like a diamond oval shape. So you see the V doesn't form, but you see how it kind of opens up and then closes back. That's to hug the back. Tailored garments do that. And, and you can see on mine too, I did it kind of the second way, but either way is fine. It's just a matter of what's your personal preference. Um, and you can see the difference a little easier here. If you look at these two backs, see that one forms the V shape on the left. Um, I believe that one was from... I, I want to say that's the Satan Pit, and that one's the Girl in the Fireplace. So they're both from, from season two, um, and this is what she stuck with later for the blue suit and the, the later brown suits. So, you know, with whatever you want to do there makes perfect sense. Um, there's another example of both backs. Oh, this is one episode. This is from The Idiot Slander, and he wore both versions. <laughs> so his suit actually changes, like, throughout the episode. You can see here... You know, it, it has the, the kind of, um, it's not really a diamond shape. It's more of a, I don't know what you call it. It's like a, an oval with points or whatever. And then here you see the V shape. So that's always fun. He did a lot of uh, bouncing back and forth. Same here, the Impossible Planet. You have the V and you have the, the other one. So here I'll show you. Over the course of season two, his suit gradually got worn out, and you could especially tell in the lapels and the sleeves, if you, if you look. Here, this is the Christmas Invasion. You see, that's, it's beautiful. It's a very nicely set-in sleeve. A couple small wrinkles, but that's to be expected when you're working with something like cotton instead of wool. You know, nothing... You can't steam it in shape. <laughs> right, not, not as much. And then this is New Earth, you know, still very early in the season. You see, it still looks very nice. But, and this is New Earth again still looking good. 
little ripples right here, no big deal. Um, more new earth. But then look, this is the girl in the fireplace. See how, how much more wrinkly it's getting already. I'm sure dunk, being dunked in goo didn't really help anything. Um, and there was definitely some good and bad episodes from, from then on out in terms of, you know, the suit uh, holding up. But the constant production use. Here's the idiot's lantern. I'll, I'll zoom in to the, to the bottom here. <laughs> Look at the state of his, at his suit at this point. It's really seen some better days by about halfway through season what, two. What is it? It looks like they even had to prepare that scene, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there was a strain. What was that, Kim? Was that just caused by wear and tear? Yeah, you know, it's when you like wear when you wear it day in and day out, multiple dry cleanings, production use, it's not like wearing it two days or three days to a con. I mean, you're talking about like every day for, and then dry cleaning it, and then a rotation, and getting dunked in goo, and everything. And this, this is from Fear Her, if you actually look there, and then at his collar and lapel. You can see it's starting to really wow. be under strain. So, you, you know, and there, there were, you know, it looked nice in Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. Um, but, there, you know, there were multiple ones. There, there was a rotation that these things were going through. It's not like you wore one. You probably had half a dozen of them, and they were just made slightly different ways. But um, you can see why at the end of Season 2, they're like, okay... These things probably aren't going to hold up another season. We need, we need another um, costume. And David Tennant and Louise Page and probably Russell T. Davies, they had talked about the Doctor having a new costume in season three because obviously with the, with the tragic departure of Rose at the end of season two, they wanted to show kind of that time, that some time had passed. The Doctor's in a new place. Um, you know, he's kind of getting on with his life, and, and it's okay for him to be in a new costume. And they went through a bunch of different designs and finally landed on the blue suit. Um, there were some really radical differences at first, but they finally decided on making a blue suit that was kind of basically the same suit, but with some different particulars. And the colors, when, when he had the blue suit, the colors kind of opened into red, too. It, before, it was very brown and blue. He always wore, like, brown and blue ties and brown and, uh, wore blue shirts, except for one that was kind of brown. Um... With the blue suit, though, you know, he often wore the red tie, and he had the burgundy shoes. They, were, they weren't red, they were burgundy. Um, so, and and the, the blue suit had the, the kind of rust-colored red pinstripes, so that opened up the color palette a little bit. But the first blue suit we saw right in Smith & Jones. Um, we only ever saw it in this episode. As far as I could tell, I never saw it again. And what's crazy about this one is you see the angle that that collar is cut in relation to the pinstripes is just crazy. You remember the blue suit was cut right on the pinstripe. Oh, right here. It's high. It's hard to get used to that high collar. But um, you see that angle is just like, whoa! Um, so that was only ever in this episode that I saw. It's possible it worked its way into some other rotation that I didn't catch. But the second blue suit he wore for the rest of season three... Um, when he wore the blue suit and partially into season four, what he did was he started switching back and forth like blue, brown, blue, brown, but his brown suits in season three were the leftover ones from season two. So he barely wore it in season three. I mean, he wore it a bit at the beginning of Smith and Jones and he wore it for the, um, the three parter at the end with the master utopia, um, through last of the time Lords. He, he wore it in several other episodes that he was barely in. He wore it, uh, in blink, he was barely in that episode. He wore it in the Human Nature Family of Blood two-parter. He was barely in the costume in that one, only the little flashback scenes when Martha went to go watch his messages. And he wore it in um, wore it in one other one, I don't remember, but he was barely in costume in that one. And of course, you know, he was in the tuxedo and the Lazarus experiments. They were really trying to keep from using the brown suit in season three. Um, they really saved it for when they really wanted to. And he wore the blue suit most of the time. And this is the version that he wore mostly... Um, or that he wore all the time in season three and well into season four. And you see, it's the only difference really is that its collar is cut at a slight angle. It's not on the pinstripe, it's just at a slight angle in relation to the pinstripe. And that's actually usually what you see with suits. It's, it's pretty rare that you see it cut straight like this. They're usually cut at a slight <coughs> angle. I don't know why that design decision was made, but it's not really surprising. And you see his lapel 
Well, it's a little different from the brown one in this version of the blue suit because it's not on a pinstripe. It's kind of like in between the pinstripes. Mm. No biggie, just kind of, it's just different is all. Um, you can see it again here. This is from 42, about halfway through season three. You, you can kind of see the pinstripes a little better. Sometimes they're hard to see on, on screen, but it's not quite on that pinstripe. And, and I mentioned that because another blue suit later did, was on the pinstripe, so whatever. Um, in terms of screen accuracy when you're, when you're making a costume. Oh, and this was from the doctor's daughter, by the way, in season four. So you can see that that suit was used all the way through. That was the seventh episode of season four. So it was used well into there. So that was season three. You get to season four, he gets a new round of brown suits. So in season two, he gets brown suits. Season three, he gets uh, blue suits. And then in season four, he got brown suits again. But these brown suits were a little bit different. If you look, they were basically the same as the second brown suit from season two. But, it, but its collar was cut kind of like the blue one. You see, it's at an angle. It's not on the pinstripe anymore. Did everyone see that okay? Yeah. Um, so just a little different there, but the, uh, the lapel still caught on a pinstripe. That was, um, what episode was that from? That was from Partners in Crime, right there. And you can see, this is, that was the first episode of season four. This is, the, this is the last. This is Journey's End right here. And what's interesting is he wore that one mostly through season four, but his old brown ones were still in the rotation. <laughs> so he wore both of these brown suits through season four. And there, this is the version he wore in The Day of the Doctor. As, as well, um, because I guess they were in the best shape. Or maybe they prefer that design, I don't really know. But you can see here, he switched. This is Journey's End. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Stolen Earth. You can see in this screen cap, he wore the early brown suit, and in this one, he wore the later brown suit in the same episode. The one from season two versus season four. And same here, this is actually the same scene, right when Donna... Um, you know, is starting to go bananas. He looks at her. He's wearing this version. We cut to Donna and cut back, and now he's wearing that version. <laughs> so just a, a fun little bit of trivia there. If you know what to look for, it's, you can't unsee it. So you're welcome, <laughs> Every, everybody. Uh, but you can see here, this is uh, the special, the next doctor. You can see he wore this version which is the later version of the brown suit. But he also wore this version. <laughs> this is also the next Doctor. So he wore the older version in the same special. And then, what's this? This is the End of Time Part 1. Here's the later version. But now, here's the interesting thing. In the End of Time Part 2, this is, this is Part 1 still. You see that version? He wore the new version until... He was wounded. He fell through the sky thing, and, you know, he had the gun with the Master and the Time Lords and, and all that. Once the suit needed to be distressed, they distressed the old version because it was already in bad shape anyway, I guess. Um, so they didn't have any problem, like, ripping it and burning it and doing all that other stuff. So you see he's wearing the old version. You know, he's all cut up on the face and everything. But then once he, you know, does his thing and he's better and his suit's all nice and clean again, he switches back. <laughs> So it's like his regeneration energy, like, patched up his suit, I guess, to... It's not the weirdest thing we've seen in Doctor Who, because if you remember when the first Doctor regenerated, his costume regenerated, too. The second Doctor shows up wearing something different. So it's not the weirdest thing we've ever seen, but it's definitely notable. Yeah. Yeah. If only we could all just... <laughs> Costume's in perfect condition. Perfect. Um, so that was at the beginning of season four. He got those brown suits. Now halfway through season four, about, about halfway, he got, a new, he got two more blue suits that were a little bit different. And you can see here, this is basically the same collar cut as the, as the first blue suit. Uh, or Sorry, second blue suit. The first one was the one with the crazy collar that we only saw the one time. The second blue suit. This one, you see, had the edge cut on the pinstripe like the brown suits did. So I guess they just decided it was time for something different or they were like, oops, we should have done that the first time. I don't really know what happened. But they, they made it like the, uh, the early ones. And you can see here, this is a publicity photo from season four. And he is wearing that version, the later version. This is blue suit, either number three or four. They're the same except for one teeny, teeny, teeny little difference, which I show you. And the only way you can tell them apart, really, um, well, I'll show you with five and six because I have a better example. So 
those blue suits through season four. Now, along at the end of season four, he got two more blue suits <laughs> that were a little different. A lot of research goes into this. Uh, and you see, these, this is Journey's End. This was the first time that I saw the new blue suit, and this is the, the Metacrisis Doctor. Um, you can see that his collar is cut straight, like the early brown suit, but not on a pinstripe. It's just cut parallel to the pinstripe. Uh, I don't really know why. Here you can, you can see it here as well. It's just a different cut of collar. Uh, it's possible that this specific costume was supposed to just be the Meta Crisis Doctors, or it's possible uh, she just decided she liked the straighter collar better. I mean, who knows? But it, it was a little different. It showed up there. And then we saw it again in the Waters of Mars. Uh, the, that was the next to last, Tenet's next to last special, and that was the last time he wore the blue suit. So it wasn't just a Meta Crisis Doctor costume. He, uh, he wore the straight collar. Or the collar with the straight edge. There. Oh, there it was. This is the only way you can really tell those two blue suits apart, though. You see here, this is called the, the gorge line. It's the, the seam between the lapel and the collar. You see here, the pinstripes kind of almost line up, but not quite at that seam. But on the other blue suit, they do. That's the only way to tell them apart, as far as I can tell. They're the same suit, except for one... The pinstripes line up. So whatever. So there, there you have it. You have three brown suits and six blue suits. So if you're ever going to make yours or if you're going to buy one, you know what to look for in terms of screen accuracy. It's all, and there's so much variation, there's almost no right and wrong because if you do it, it was probably done at some point. Uh, the only things that were really consistent were you can see the brown suit front edge was not on a pinstripe, but was between the two pinstripes, which is a little unusual. Not the lapel, though. The, the lapel facing was on the pinstripe, like I showed you earlier, but the, the actual jacket front was not. Yeah? When you were making both suits, how hard did you try to uh, match up the pinstripes? Well, I'll tell you. I had just finished making three pairs of plaid trousers. <laughs> Pinstripes were a piece of cake. They were a walk in the park after plaid. Um, it's hard, but it's not as hard as plaid. I'll, I'll tell you that. Um, I had just made some kind of second doctor-ish trousers and some joker trousers from Batman. You know, they had the purple and green kind of checkered plaid pattern. Matching up those, whew, they have a little gold stripe in them too, so that's just lovely. To, to do, but anyway, so, so this front edge is not on a pinstripe, and I really think it's just because of the buttons. If you look at the button, like, there's a certain amount of space that really needs to be there between the front edge of the jacket and the, the edge of the button, and two pinstripes would have been too much, and one pinstripe would have been not enough, so that's probably why that was done. So you can see there, that's from Army of Ghosts, and uh, there's Free Madgeman not playing Martha, you know, when he's sonicking your little Cybermen. Here, and this is from Day of the Doctor, so you can see this was every version of the brown suit had the same style front, but the blue suit had a front edge that was cut on the pinstripe. So I'm guessing that was just because on the blue suit, the pinstripes are a little bit farther apart than they are on the brown suit, so she probably didn't need to worry about, you know, what to do there. It just made sense to just cut it like you normally would. But with the blue suit, what changed was whether or not the lapel was cut on the pinstripe or not. So, who knows what was up with that. One of the nice things about this suit is that the front dart, when it was done right, was done really well. It was centered over a pinstripe, and you can see I emulated that effect on mine, so you don't even see it's there. You see how the pinstripes kind of, that one pinstripe kind of disappears, and then once you get into the dart, you just see this kind of seamless pinstripe effect. And it wasn't always done that way, but when it does, I think it looks particularly good. Like here you can see one of the blue suits from season four, kind of not really, not quite, the dart's just kind of there. You know, they were probably in such a hurry to make these things, they didn't have time to do what I did and just kind of like spend half a day getting the dart just right. Um, you probably, I've never worked, done this for a TV show, but I'm imagining you, you don't have 
especially when you have like so many of these to make at a time. Now, what's kind of funny is you can kind of watch Tennant. You know, he was so thin, but you can kind of watch. He filled out a little bit as the show goes. This is from School Reunion early in season three. You can see the top of the dart is above the top button. So the dart came up to like right here because he's so teeny. But then as time went, see here, this is the impossible planet. It's still kind of in the same place. But then the blue suit comes along, and now the top dart is even with the top button. So it's a little lower, just kind of an inch or two. Smith and Jones, beginning of season three. Now this is season four. The top of the dart is beneath the top button. This is Partners in Crime. And you can see, too, that the dart isn't quite, not as much was taken in. The pinstripes are a little bit farther apart across that dart. So they had to let, they made the dart smaller and didn't take in as much. And... By the time Day of the Doctor, it was back up to the top of the button, but the dart was still a little weird. So, you know, not he wasn't fat by any stretch of the imagination, but you can tell he kind of filled out as the show went because the dart was getting not as much and lower. Just a fun little tidbit. A cool little feature of the brown suit is this pocket, too, right here. This is unusual for a suit because a lot of time with the suit, you'll have like a little welt right here or uh, an inside pocket um, that maybe you don't see or covered, like maybe with a flap like this, but you wouldn't see the actual pocket. And funnily enough, the pocket actually changed sizes. <laughs> and there was a different size on the brown suit and the blue suit. The, the dimensions might have been the same, but the pinstripe kind of thing was different. So here you can see both edges of the flap are kind of between the pinstripes. This is from Army of Ghosts. And you can see here, this is also from Army of Ghosts, here's a nice close-up. You can see that the edge of the pocket is between pinstripes, and that's how I made mine. All right here, the pinstripes line up on the edge, but the actual edge of the pocket isn't there. But, <clears throat> excuse me, but um, this is from the Sound of Drums. You can kind of see the same thing. I don't know why you can see that here. It's kind of dark, and I'm looking at an angle, so can you see it okay? Yeah. Good, good. This is from Midnight in season four. You can see the edge of that pocket is on a pinstripe um, and the flap. When I say pocket and pocket flap, I'm usually talking about the same thing, but they might be different if you look closely enough. Um, and then here, this is from a day of the doctor publicity photo. You can see the edge of the pocket and the flap is right there on a stripe, but the other edge isn't. The other edge is still between, so it changed dimensions a little bit. <laughs> Who knows, whatever. And then kind of the same thing with the blue suit. You can see here it's between stripes. The, fr the front is on the stripe and the other side isn't. So whatever. Um, if you, again, when you're thinking about make, oh, and this, here's a blue suit with the opposite. This edge is on a pinstripe and then the front edge is not. So again, if you're, if you're wanting to make a suit or if you're wanting to buy a suit and you're trying to evaluate it in terms of screen accuracy, it was probably done sometime. <laughs> I mean, I get really specific with my costumes and my replicas and cosplays and everything, but again, it was probably done at some point, so I don't know how much you, you want to obsessively sweat over it. Here you can see the edge of the pocket looks like it's on a pinstripe, but the flap is not. The flap actually extends over a little farther than the pocket. So that's the top pocket. They really padded up David Tennant to try to beef him up because he was so small. Um, you know, there were shoulder pads and sleeve heads installed. Does, does everyone know what a sleeve head is? I know you do. Sleeve head? It's a thing that goes inside the sleeve to fill it out. If I move like that, you can kind of see the shape of it. Because when you ease in a sleeve, if you don't install a head, it just falls right over and it looks terrible. Um, but if you install the head to fill out the space, it, it kind of pads it out a little bit and it keeps the sleeve looking nice and crisp. But this is from um, when he was wounded, mortally wounded or whatever, with the radiation in the end of time, the distress that you can kind of see the shoulder pad peeking out from underneath the rips and tears and burns and whatever else in the suit. Here you can see, I don't know how well you can see it here, but you can see the bottom of the shoulder pad. And the shoulder pads are just made out of this kind of 
I use cotton batting to make my shoulder pads, like you put in quilts. Nothing, nothing special. They're, they're not as big as the shoulder pads of the 80s. Oh, yeah. If anyone watches, uh, any fans of Star Trek The Next Generation? <laughs> you know the Romulans? <laughs> they have those pads. Um, one of the cool things about his suit uh, is that he wore it different ways. Sometimes he wore a tie. And sometimes he wore, like, multiple shirts and layers underneath. Again, if you check out Steve Rick's blog, um, he has the tie index. But he, he wore all these different ties. And one of the cool ways that he wore his ties is he never buttoned, it, buttoned his shirt all the way up to the top. And he only put his ties up to here. So it was definitely more casual. He's like, I'm wearing a suit, but not really. Um, it's much more comfortable around the neck if you're afraid of wearing ties. He wore his like this. And he, did, he, he always did that. I'll spare you the, the couple dozen screen caps I have here of the brown and blue suit for now. You can, you can see them on my, uh, on my blog, tithdoctorsuit.blogspot.com. That's uh, 10th doctorsuit.blogspot.com. And he also wore these different layers like this. Um, you can see here he has several shirts on underneath the jacket. That's from Tooth and Claw. It's from School Reunion at the end. Fear Her. And then that's kind of the Tooth and Claw outfit again from Blink. Midnight, he did this cool thing where he wore his shirt collar over the, the suit, like a cool guy, I guess. Um, and, and he did these same things with the brown suit, too. That was very 70s when he did the shirt and collar. Yeah. I wasn't around then, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> You can study costume fashion. Yeah. Well, um, I have a 70s suit pattern, and, and I see the, like, the, the crazy like flowery it's all shirt. It's Yeah. So he, this is 42. You can see he kind of did the same thing with the red shirt over the collar. Um, and he did it again in Planet of the Ood in season four. Is that Planet of the Ood? Yeah, that's Planet of the Ood in season four. So we only have a little bit of time left, so I'll just... Uh, talk a little bit about Tim Suit and making your own and, and all that. There are a lot of resources available. This is, uh, I used Magnolia Clothier's replica fabric to make my suit, and I have some scraps here that you can pass around, take a look at, feel. You know how I said it was lightweight cotton. Here, you can scrap those and just pass those around. It's a lightweight cotton, you can feel it, and it's just, it feels like, like tissue, like a Kleenex or something. It's, it's very cool stuff. Um, spot on in terms of weight and color if you check out there's a there's a very cool uh blog or per personality the ginger doctor if you if you go check out his stuff he has a comparison of the magnolia fabric and the gap fabric and you can see it's spot on in terms of color the only difference is that the pinstripes are a teeny 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 little bit farther apart on the magnolia replica fabric but it's still spot on. And the blue fabric, we have a blue, we have a magnolia blue suit. Do you mind coming up to the front for a second? You can see she actually, she actually bought a magnolia suit. This is magnolia blue fabric. So you can see my blue, or my brown next to her blue. So I'll give her a hand. I'm going to show it off. It's a beautiful suit. Um, she, had it, she had it fitted. And uh, I think it looks very good on her. Great job. Um, so again, the Ginger Doctor, you can see that, that comparison. Um, for the hair, there's a guy on YouTube, 10th Doctor Matt. He has these amazing hair tutorials. I haven't quite nailed it yet. This is the best I can do. But he has some great tutorials on how to do 10 hair the way they did in the show. Someone actually grabbed a screen cap from like behind the scenes of the uh, word, or makeup and hair trailer with the instructions on how to do the hair. And, and Anyway, he's great. 10th Doctor Matt on YouTube. He has a Facebook page as well, but all his, all his tutorial videos are on YouTube. Um, for our last few minutes, I'll pass this book around too. This is the book I mentioned earlier. Tailoring Classic Guide to Sewing the Perfect Jacket. You can thumb through it and see all the different photos and everything. Oh, yes. Hold that thought. Let me pass these ties around while you're asking a question okay. too. I have some Magnolia replica ties here. I'm wearing one. This is the swirly tie replica. Magnolia's not paying me. I'm not affiliated with them anyway. I'm just a huge fan of their, their stuff. I'm wearing Magnolia replica glasses. I have to wear glasses. I got my prescription 
lenses installed, and these are my regular, these are my regular glasses. So these are three Magnoli ties. This is what they call the Shakespeare tie. This is an embroidered swirly tie. And then this is one that you would wear with the blue suits, the Manhattan tie. This is just one of the most, they're all three beautiful, but this is just one of the most beautiful ties I've ever seen in my life. If you hold it different ways, you can see it changes color because of the weave. It has some burgundy and some like navy blue woven into it with the floral pattern. But anyway, so we can pass these around and you can take a look at those. What was your question, Kim? Or comment? Is the suit jacket long? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll show, I'll show you mine. Um, unsurprisingly, the brown suit is lined with brown, and the blue suit is lined with blue. Um, what, what fabric did you use? I used a Bemberg rayon lining from my local Joanne. I'm a big fan of the Bemberg rayon. Um, but you can use just regular old anti-static lining if you want, or silk or satin or, or anything that you think you want to line your jacket with. I like the Bimberg Ram because it's light and it feels very nice on the skin. Not that any of your skin is ever really well, touching it's slippery it. slippery so that you can get your skin. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, I think it breathes about as well as lining can breathe. <laughs> I mean, it's lining. So, yeah, so you have those resources. Um, there are some other books. We don't, you're, you're really the only sewer in the room so we can talk about it kind of one-on-one later. I don't want to bore everyone else with like this hardcore tailoring Bible or whatever, uh, classic tailoring techniques for menswear and vintage couture tailoring if you ever want to uh, check that one out. That one's a good two. Good two. The Think Geek Sonic Screwdriver is also a universal remote. I'm having some Blu-ray issues right now, or player issues with my Blu-ray player, but you can actually program it to do stuff. So I, I had it programmed to my player so I could you know, turn on my TV and play, rewind, eject. I, I, I programmed it so if I pulled, the, the tray would come out to change the disc. And um, if you, like, rotate it, you can turn the volume. And you can assign it to whatever you want, but that's how I assign mine. It's cool. It's about 100 bucks, but it's well worth it. It's very superior to the toy version, I think, in terms of size and weight. And it's, uh, it's programmable. It has four different features. You have FX mode, control mode, practice mode. All sorts of cool stuff, and as you can see, it extends. It charges USB as well, so you can plug it in your computer, or your car, or, or whatever your 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 cell phone charger. Very convenient. It makes thirteen different sound effects, which is cool. What was that? Pen. Well, it's more useful than this, <laughs> unless you watch a lot of Blu-rays <laughs> or, or, or DVDs. Um, we only have like a couple minutes left. I had a lot more material, but check out, uh, we have a blog, 10thdoctorsuit.blogspot.com, and we have a lot of sewing tutorials and everything on our website, badwolfcostumes.com. I am putting together a 10th Doctor suit tutorial right now, uh, mainly for sewers, but if you don't know much about sewing or tailoring, you can still check out the tutorial. It's very in-depth. I walk you through every step. And I take so many photos while I'm doing this, too. It's like, do this, photo, do this, photo, do this, photo. I want to make it... There's no easy way to make a suit, but I make it as easy as possible. And we're also doing a sewing pattern for this suit as well. This, this was my uh, finished brown suit. The pattern's basically finished, but I'm making a blue suit tutorial, too. So I know you guys all love the blue suit. Um, so I'm doing a blue suit tutorial. I have my fabric here. I was going to show you and pass around, but we have a blue suit, which is even better. So brown suit tutorial is basically done. I haven't put it online yet. Blue suit tutorial is coming. Definitely check that out. Again, badwolfcostumes.com and 10thdoctorsuit.blogspot.com. Either, either one. Like, like us on Facebook, send us a message. Only, only a few minutes. Do Any questions or comments or anything? This has mostly just been me yammering about all these different suits. I know you all love the blue suits. Any any questions or comments? Yeah. Pockets. Excuse me. Nine pockets on this thing. Nine pockets. You have this one. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll show you right now. I have stuff. They look like a flat pocket, but they open from the top, which is different from how they use. Yeah, yeah. I was going to get to that. We kind of ran short on time, and I wanted to give you guys a couple minutes. Um, these pockets are unusual in their construction because you look, the flap goes up, but there's no pocket there. The pocket is behind the flap. 
and that's how tenants were. And they're unusual in their construction, but they're easy once you get the hang of it. I won't bore you since not many of you sew. You already figured it out, and you sew, so we don't even need to go there. But they're weird pockets, but you can put stuff in them. They're perfectly functional. Um, so you have, you have the chest pocket up here. You have these two. You have two pockets on the inside, like you normally would. I have all kinds of goodies in here right now. And then you have two pockets right here on the pants. And then you have two pockets right here in the back, right here, like you would normally have on those pants, you know, for your wallet or, or whatever you want to put in there. So nine pockets, all of them are fully functional. Yeah. Not as many as the Enterprise jumpsuit. <laughs> A lot of pockets on that thing. Did he wear a belt? I just nope. noticed you didn't have one on. He never, he never wore a belt. Okay. Um, I'm guessing he wore, like, size 22 <laughs> men's <laughs> trousers. He got them to fit just right and didn't need, didn't need the belt. Um, and actually, if you look in Journey's, Journey's End, um, well, the two times that you see him without the jacket, one time with the brown suit, one time with the blue suit, you have Runaway Bride. Um, he takes off his jacket and puts it on Donna. You can see no belt. And journeys in. The Metacrisis doctor is getting dressed. You know, he showed up naked. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> he and he wore uh, the blue suit with only the burgundy shirt. You see him. He's in the pants and the burgundy t-shirt um, or maroon or whatever it was. And he reaches and gets the blue jacket off the hook and puts the blue jacket on before going outside. Um, you can see he doesn't have a belt on then, either. Any other any other questions comments? Yeah. You ever thought about doing like the uh, the trench coat you wear? Going yes, on? that is my next project after the blue suit. Probably. I'm actually next. I'm probably going to do uh, Mal Reynolds trousers from Firefly, <laughs> and um, yeah. I'm going to be doing a sewing pattern for those as well. I'm doing the blue suit, then that, then I'm, I'm either going to do the coat or a Joker costume from Tim Burton's Batman just to have a break break from <laughs> Doctor. Uh, tenth Doctor, but yes, the the trench coat is on there. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a sewing pattern for it at this point or not. But, you know, st follow us on Facebook and, and our website. We do say, like, what we have coming up. And, and if you find yourself really wanting one, send us a message, and we'll be like, okay, we have a pattern coming soon, or no, you're better off going with Steve Ricks or Magnolia or someone else who makes it. But I'm going to make one for me, no matter what. I'll probably end up doing a sewing pattern for it, too, and that'll probably be in July if I do that, July Once or August. Thank you. Thank you.